Over on our Facebook page, Life Art Journaling and Self-Development, January is all about constructing a junk journal and you'll find many more tutorials as part of our Facebook page where we host them free twice a week. Last week on the Facebook page, we began our journal and we made two um, very beautiful pockets which will act as uh, pages within our journal. And I thought it would be fun to create some things to go in those pockets. The first thing you're going to need for this project is some hard cardboard and I want you to find something that is plain on both sides. This could be the back of a cover of um, an old sketchbook perhaps or one of those uh, pads of paper you often get hardback cardboard on that. It can be mount board, anything that is sort of quite stiff cardboard. That's because when we put it inside our pockets, we want it to hold its shape. You're then going to need some grease proof paper. This can either be the white variety or the brown. Um, this grease proof paper or deli paper, it's often called in America, is what you would use when you're baking cakes. You're going to need a variety of acrylic paints and you're going to need a little bit of brown paper. I've got a stash of junk uh, sitting with me at the moment because of constructing these junk journals. So I'm going to use a back of a brown manila envelope. You're going to need a cloth. This is very important. We're going to need to do some dry brush painting and I want you to be able to really dry your brush after each wash. You will definitely need some gel medium and only gel medium will do for this particular exercise and a glue stick, a Pritt stick or, or something similar. If you want, at the end of this project, you can glitz it up with a little bit of gold and you can either use gold leaf or I've got here some of these gilding flakes that I bought at a show a while ago. This particular project you can use as a standalone piece, just as a background, as a technique to construct some sort of ephemera for yourself, or indeed you can use it within the Junk Journal January project. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to dry brush some paint in various patches all over this piece of greaseproof paper. Now you will know that I am very used to always having a little bit of greaseproof paper next to me whenever I'm doing any journaling and that way I can always rub off my excess paint that I'm doing onto this and I have a whole stash of this sort of um, ephemera in my junk. I'm dry brushing various bits of paint on here, letting it dry just for a couple of seconds until it's tacky dry and then I'm washing my brush and fully drying it on that cloth. The layers do need to be dry in between, you do need to have paint that is dry. We don't want to blend all these colours, the idea is that we have various layers of patches of colour. So though of course in this video I've sped it up and it looks like I'm going one onto the other, there is a sort of couple of second break where I'm allowing the layers to dry. If you're lucky enough to have uh, the old metal radiators as a source of he heat in your house, uh, grab a couple of magnets and just pin these pieces to your radiator for about five minutes to really let them dry. If not, do let them air dry fully. They will need to be properly dry to do the next step. So you can see here, as I said, I've got a whole stash of these painted bits of greaseproof paper. I use them as a palette, I use them as a wipe off sheet after I've done work. You're going to take some gel medium and I always use a window squeegee, a, a window washing tool, uh, to gently spread my gel medium over my board. You don't want it very thin but you don't want it too thick either. Essentially it's like you're buttering your toast. 
So spread it out and then you're going to put your board uh, gel medium downside on top of the painted side of your grease proof paper so that the gel medium is making contact with the acrylic paint and you're going to do this for all of your boards and cut them out and then just leave them to stand for about five minutes now a top tip something that i have um, you know done over time as i've worked this process uh, when i've stuck all of my pieces down and i've sort of cut them and i've got four squares what i do is i take a piece of paper and I just rub gently over the top. Um, you can see me doing it with my hand here, but actually I tend to take a piece of paper and just rub over the top of it, um, just to press down that acrylic paint. What we are asking these pieces to do is we are asking the paint to stick to the gel medium, but I'm not gonna to give too much away yet. Okay, you ready for the magic? This truly is quite magical. So what you're going to do is take um, a flat um, tool. This can be an old credit card. This could be um, the back of a spoon. Um, I tend to use the end of a ruler. And you're rubbing gently. Um, pressing down and what happens is that you'll start to see the back of the grease proof paper lifting off. Um, has anybody ever done those uh, body tattoo things that you put on a child's arm and then you, you put warm water on it and you rub gently until the paper comes off? Uh, essentially we're doing exactly the same thing. We're really pressing that paint down, down onto that gel medium that we put on those boards because what happens then is truly quite lovely. So once you've rubbed it all down, peel off, and you end up with this amazing, grungy, flaky, brilliant, modern art little board. And what's lovely is all the paint has lied so flat that it's almost like uh, a jelly plate transfer, layers and layers of this paint. It really reminds me of those really old walls that you find where people have painted in their various different colors and you end up with this surface full of all the history of different people's color choices. I absolutely love doing this technique. You can see as I'm rubbing over mine, now and then I end up going through the back of the paper and denting into the cardboard. Don't worry about that. It actually ends up adding to this grungy surface rather than detracting from it. Now where you go from here with your pieces is totally up to you. I'm gonna tell you what I choose to do. I absolutely love these gilding flakes. They are so beautiful, but uh, word to the wise, don't breathe anywhere near them because they're so light, they flitter all over the place. 
I use a glue stick to make some little marks all over my pieces and then I dust some gilding flakes uh, over a piece of paper and then I lay my cardboard down on top of the gilding flakes and in that way I continue this kind of random process allowing these gilding flakes to stick here and there. And I'll do that to all of my pieces before I even begin to start dusting the excess off. I always leave my gilding flakes to stick to my um, glue for at least 10 minutes. I do want it to stick fast so that when I dust it off, I don't uh, risk peeling off bits that aren't quite glued down. In this video, I also show you how to use a bit of silver leaf or gold leaf because I think that obviously for some people that might be easier to access. But you could just as easily use a gold metallic pen and make marks with that. For the silver leaf, I choose to do exactly the same. I put some glue stick marks down and then I stick my silver leaf over the top. I leave it for five minutes and then I rub it off. So my pieces have been left to dry for five minutes and what I do now is I take um, the waste bit of greaseproof paper, lay it down over the top and just push all those gilding flakes down. This is another way of ensuring that I don't risk picking up some of the uh, excess waste um, alongside all of the bits that have actually glued down so I just lay it on the top gently rub it down and that means that it will stick then I'm going to use a paintbrush now I like to use a normal DIY paintbrush for these I find them a little bit rougher perhaps than a uh, artist paintbrush and I just use those to dust over the top um, sort of sweeping here and there just to pick up the excess and let that all fall off and of course personally waste not want not I dust all of that off onto a spare piece of paper so that I can recontain it at the end So we all know that one of the ways to make colours really pop is to allow there to be a contrast, uh, black and white being the best sort of contrast colours to allow a blended array of colours to pop. Here I'm using some blackboard paint just around the edges of my board. I paint the very, very thin edges uh, first and then I take my brush and I quite haphazardly just sort of go around the outside. I want to continue this 
idea that these are these washed out grungy boards and I don't want to be too careful so just allowing my brush to separate as it goes over those edges uh, means I get this rough grungy edge I add just one singular heart on each piece, just as a singular focal point. In my junk journal, I'm going to use these bits of cardboard as um, tags, very large tags. And actually, any journaling I'm going to do is going to be on the reverse side. These pretty decorated backgrounds are simply to um, look be a focal point through the back of those plastic envelopes that you saw at the beginning of this video. So what I've done here is I've punched some brown manila paper with a circle punch and then I've used a smaller hole punch just to cut out the middles of them. I'm going to use a book binding awl or a braddle to push some holes through this cardboard. My cardboard is very thick and it certainly wouldn't go through a hole punch. Um, so I'm just pushing some holes through and then I will glue my manila circles on top of those holes, obviously with the um, holes in the circle meeting the holes in the cardboard. And then I'm going to use some um, ribbon that I actually made from cutting up old skirts. Uh, I'm going to use the ribbon to make some, just some little tab tops. And then I will pop these back inside my envelopes. There is something so wonderful about grunge. It's so imperfect and yet so completely beautiful. I'm reminded of weatherboarded uh, fence posts as you come to an old hidden garden or perhaps the walls in a very Victorian home. It's just beautiful to discover all the layers underneath all these pieces and I do hope you will give it a go. As I said, the reverse is actually going to be the piece that I will journal on in the end. Um, and these beautiful backgrounds are just there to be the thing that you see as you open these plastic uh, pages in our junk journals. If you've arrived at this video and you're not part of the Facebook group, we would love to see you there. Please do click in the link below. All of the other videos in the Junk Journal series will be part of our unit section in the Facebook group. And you are welcome to come and visit us and be part of the whole experience of constructing our beautiful Junk Journals for 2020. Have a brilliant day, all and every single one of you.